In the history of Pokemon games, there have been a total of 20 characters who have canonically held the title of champion. Granted, some of these leagues were smaller than others, but regardless, they were the champion of a league which exists where people battle Pokemon. That being said, while these characters might hold the highest possible title among the trainers in the story, the competitive viability of the teams that they use come into question at times. Now, there could be a number of reasons a supposedly powerful trainer can be absolutely annihilated by some kid with a Squirtle, but typically the fanbase has accepted that characters like gym leaders purposely take it easy on their challengers because it's their job to test them, not to beat them at full power. But a champion is defending their title. Once they lose, they're no longer the strongest trainer in the league and thus no longer the champion. So there's really no reason for them to go easy on any of their challengers. So I got to wondering, just which champion had the best competitive team? Now, you need to keep in mind a couple of things that are really important here. Despite Pokemon battles in the story being single battles like 90-99% of the time, the official competitive format of Pokemon VGC is a doubles format. This means that many teams will just outright be at a disadvantage due to a lack of essential fundamentals for double battles. But these are champions, I won't be pulling my punches. Today we'll be analyzing and figuring out just which champion had the best competitive team. If you enjoyed this video at any point in time, be sure to leave a like and subscribe. As a matter of fact, you should really just subscribe right now because I have a playlist full of content just like this that you can watch once this video ends. And if you think you're subscribed, do me a favor and double check because only like half my viewers actually are. With that, let's get into the video. Now, before we begin, I should clarify some things. We won't always be using the team that said champion used in their championship defense match against the player, but rather the strongest iteration of their team. For example, as iconic as Cynthia's Pokemon Platinum team may be, it pales in power compared to the team that she uses in the Pokemon World Tournament in Gen 5, since that team has items on every one of the Pokemon and access to moves introduced a generation later. I won't be mixing and matching different Pokemon sets they've used across the history of the games, meaning I can't toss that Mega Garchomp that she gets in Sun and Moon onto Cynthia's team from the Pokemon World Tournament so everything has an item. I'm using their teams as is. Levels for any of the Pokemon don't matter, as in VGC, all Pokemon are automatically set to level 50. Also, we'll be doing this in a tier list format, meaning champions will be ranked from D to A tier. And look, while I'd love to discuss the nuances of Trace's epic Marowak, it doesn't have access to an ability or any items. So, the real stinkers will cover very briefly. This video will focus on B tier champions and above. Speaking of stinkers, our lineup of bad champions are Trace, Peony, Hao, and Diantha in D tier and Kukui, Lance, and N in C tier. Now, Trace, I hardly need to explain. His whole team is full of power crept Gen 1 Pokemon with no abilities or items other than a Pidgeotite that gives him access to Mega Pidgeot, notably a Mega Pidgeot who can miss its moves, unlike every other Mega Pidgeot in existence. Absolutely the worst champion. Good game though, you should definitely play it. I really like Let's Go Pikachu. Now, Peony might have access to some decent Pokemon as he is a Generation 8 trainer, but they're all Steel-type granting him a huge fire and fighting weakness. He also has no items on anything, and above all else, his huh? team only has 5 Pokemon. He gets whatever the bad version of a Silver Medal is. How, despite being a champion in a later generation, has some of the most low-tier Pokemon at his disposal. And while yes, he does have an Incineroar, it doesn't have Intimidate, or even all four of its moves filled out. Our final D tier is Diantha, who I really don't need to explain much about. Once again, we have no items on anything other than a Gardevoirite, and her team just absolutely gets annihilated by a Fairy-type. There's zero counterplay to Dazzling Gleam spam other than hope that the opponent doesn't have it. And other than her Gorgeist, the team's physical bulk is pretty questionable. Absolutely rocked by Rock Slide spam. Moving on to C tier, we have Kukui. The first champion of the Alola League sounds impressive until you realize that he appointed himself to that position. Kukui has access to high base stat Pokemon like Snorlax and Magnezone, but his Incineroar once again has the wrong ability. At least it's got four moves though. How? But the team, despite being pretty decent, lacks items, and Alola Ninetales just doesn't cut it when you don't have Snow Warning. Tailwind Braviary is cool though, you know, speed control is pretty good. Lance is up next, being our first champion with items on all of his Pokemon thanks to the Pokemon World Tournament in Generation 5. We'll see that this is a pretty big advantage in these rankings. While Lance does have some of the strongest Pokemon in the game at his disposal, all with pretty great movesets, there's one major flaw. Yeah, you guessed it, a huge fairy weakness that he has literally no way to play around. Bro clearly has never heard of Fluttermane. And finally, we have N at the top of C tier. Way to go, N! You literally have a legendary Pokemon on your team, but that isn't carrying this squad of bargain bin picks. And once again, no items. The champion of C tier. 
This channel is partnered with Gamersubs. If you want to support my work and get great tasting drinks, you can order Gamersubs through my link in the description down below or with code MOXIEBOOSTER at checkout for 10% off. Gamersubs is a caffeinated product that I recommend only to my 18 plus viewers, but my link will send you to their caffeine free product section just in case. Every product purchased through my link supports my channel financially, so I'd really appreciate the support. Now back to the video. With the goobers out of the way, we can really get down to business. So who is the worst champion that is worth talking about? Well, that honor goes to Leon. Frankly, I'm not sure how this dude managed to go undefeated so long. Why? Say it with me. No items. Leon is one of three trainers in B tier or above who runs no items on their team. His best team has to be his championship defense team if the player chooses Sobble as their starter. This consists of Aegislash with King Shield, Shadow Ball, Sacred Sword, and Flash Cannon, Clear Body Dragapult with Shadow Ball, Flamethrower, Thunderbolt, and Dragon Breath? Okay bro, you're the champion and you can't afford the Dragon Pulse TM, that's just weird. Moldbreaker Haxorus with Poison Jab, Iron Tail, Outrage, and Earthquake, Solid Rock Rhyperior with Earthquake, Stone Edge, Mega Horn, and Heat Crash, Overgrow Rillaboom with Drum Beating, Knock Off High Horsepower, and Endeavor, and Blaze G-Max Charizard with Fire Blast, Air Slash, Solar Beam, and Ancient Power. While it is true that Gigantamax Pokemon in a match against a player without the option to Dynamax would be busted, I'd like to assume that the opponent would have that option at their disposal if Leon has it. But G-Max Wildfire is a great move, although as great of a move as it is, dealing damage to all non-fire types passively over time, it can't really save this team. If I had to describe it in one term, it'd be pretty suboptimal. Lots of heavy hitters for sure, but very few spread options. Rock Slide would be preferable over Stone Edge on Rhyperior, as it is a spread move and also much more accurate than Stone Edge, and that Rillaboom should definitely be a Grassy Surge set with Grassy Glide and Fake Out. It's just extremely underwhelming and ill-prepared for a doubles match. Bottom of B tier he goes. Next up is Iris. We'll be using her Challenge Mode rematch team from Pokemon Black and White 2. This consists of Wise Glass's Hydreigon with Fire Blast, Focus Blast, Dragon Pulse, and Surf, Life Orb Intimidate Salamence with Fire Blast, Earthquake, Draco Meteor, and Crunch, Flying Gem Archaeops with Acrobatic, Stone Edge, Dragon Claw, and Endeavor, Muscle Band Rockhead Aggron with Earthquake, Double Edge, Head Smash, and Autotomize, Zoom Lens Water Absorb Lapras with Hydro Pump, Blizzard, Thunder, and Sing, and Focus Sash Moldbreaker Haxorus with Earthquake, Guillotine, Outrage, and Dragon Dance. Now, looking at her team, it's full of real powerhouses. All of these Pokemon have crazy damage output options, from Muscle Band Head Smash with no recoil to Life Orb Draco Meteor off that Salamence. It even has setup with Focus Sash Haxorus. But while it has a lot of damage output, it's a fundamentally flawed team with very little defensive play into the various fighting and fairy types that could easily sweep through it. It lacks important doubles fundamentals like Speed Control and Protect, so for that reason, Iris sits in B tier. Wallace from Sutopolis City and the stand-in champion for Steven in Pokemon Emerald takes the next spot. Once again, his best team is his Pokemon World Tournament team, consisting of Rocky Helmet, Marvel Scale, Milotic with Scald, Icy Wind, Rest, and Sleep Talk, Focus Sash, Rough Skin, Sharpedo with Hydro Pump, Crunch, Zen Headbutt, and Aqua Jet, Leftovers Thick Fat, Walrein with Surf, Yawn, Blizzard, and Sheer Cold, Life Orb, Swift Swim, Ludicolo with Surf, Focus Blast, Giga Drain, and Rain Dance, Rindo Berry, Torrent Swampert with Muddy Water, Earth Power, Ice Beam, and Focus Blast, and Expert Belt Natural Cure Starmie with Surf, Psychic, Thunderbolt, and Signal Beam. Typically, these monotype trainers are at a significant disadvantage due to the team consisting of Pokemon that share many weaknesses. But Wallace here manages to pick the one type that I think you can actually get away with it. Historically, in VGC, rain teams have been very powerful options that can play super aggressively and not really have to worry too much about defensive play because of that. On top of that, he's got some pretty great sets here, like Rain Dance Ludicolo to boost the water moves on the rest of his team while setting itself up to sweep with Swift Swim Surf and Giga Drain. The team even has great speed control in Icy Wind Milotic and status with Yawn Wall Rain. Honestly, if this team had any Pokemon with Protect and a non-water type, Wallace could end up being much higher on the list, but running entirely water types makes this team far too exploitable to beat anything but teams with a rain weakness. Hopefully, his roommate can do better. Deciding between Steven's Aorus rematch team and his Pokemon World Tournament team is kind of a tough choice, but I'll be going with the Pokemon World Tournament team again since Mega Metagross isn't really worth losing out on items for every other Pokemon. His team consists of Akaberry, Clear Body, Metagross with Zen Headbutt, Hammer Arm, Earthquake, and Bullet Punch, Air Balloon, Rock Head, Aggron with Head Smash, Avalanche, Earthquake, and Metal Burst, Focus Sash, Sand Rush, Excadrill with Earthquake, Rock Slide, X Scissor, and Sandstorm, Citrus Berry, Archaeops with Head Smash, Acrobatics, Earthquake, and Quick Attack, Expert Belt Suction Cups Cradilly with Stone Edge, Seed Bomb, Earthquake, and Sandstorm, and White Herb Battle Armor Armaldo with X Scissor, Rock Blast, Earthquake, and Super Power. Now, despite this team not having a Tyranitar, this is a pretty okay sand team. 
Once again, since it was designed for singles, it's missing out on Protect users, but it conveniently has Rockslide Excadrill on it, and if you've ever played against that Pokemon, you already know why it's annoying to face. But hey, where there's a rock slide, there's a way, right? Akaberia Metagross is also a pretty decent choice, as it gives Steven some leeway with fire-type attacks into it. And even though most of his team has a fighting weakness, he does have some Pokemon that can deal with it in Zen Headbutt Metagross and Acrobatics Archeops. That being said, his team is pretty mid considering it does have to set up sand manually, and it has that massive earthquake weakness almost across the board. Middle of B tier it goes. We're getting close to finishing up the mid bros, and we'll be moving on to Nimona. Nimona, unfortunately, doesn't have any teams where she uses items on her Pokemon, which puts her at a massive disadvantage. But she has one thing on her side that carries her all the way here. Gen 9 Power Creep. And by that I mean Miascarada and Palmot specifically, because those are actually the only Gen 9 Pokemon that she has. But her whole team is filled with some pretty great Pokemon. She's got Sandrush Lycanroc with Accelerock, Drill Run, Playruff, and Stealthrock. Soundproof Kamoa with Clangorous Soul, Drain Punch, Thunder Punch, and Earthquake, Blaze Infernape with Mock Punch, Close Combat, Flare Blitz, and Stone Edge, Competitive Milotic with Draining Kiss, Surf, Ice Beam, and Mud Shot, Bolt Absorb Palma with Double Shot, Close Combat, Ice Punch, and Mock Punch, and Overgrow Meowskarada with Flower Trick, Thunder Punch, Throat Chop, and Play Rough. The type spread on this team is pretty decent, as she's got a pretty good Firewater Grass Core in Infernape, Milotic, and Meowskarada. The team even has some decent setup with Clangorous Soul Kamoa, but the issues with this is that that Kamoa would be far more reliable if Nomono did something as small as equip it with a Citrus Berry. And the biggest issue with the team beyond the lack of items is the lack of speed control options and protect. I mean, there are a couple of issues too. Why are you running a Palmot without Fake Out? Why aren't you running any kind of like recovery other than rest on your Milotic? There's, there's a few issues here, but the team is mostly there and it's okay. Just above Nomona is Alder, who is lucky enough to be present in the Black and White 2 Pokemon World Tournament meaning he's got items on all of his Pokemon. He also isn't locked to being a monotype trainer. His team consists of Chardyberry, Flame Body, Volcarona with Quiver Dance, Heat Wave, Bug Buzz, and Psychic, Life Orb Guts, Conkleder with Hammer Arm, Mock Punch, Stone Edge, and Payback, Leftovers, Overcloat, Reuniclus with Light Screen, Reflect, Toxic, and Psychic, Expert Belt, Intimidate, Crooked Isle with Earthquake, Crunch, Stone Edge, and Outrage, Choice Scarf, Flashfire, Chandelure with Flamethrower, Shadow Ball, Energy Ball, and Psychic, and Choice Band, Sheer Force, Braviary with Brave Bird, Superpower, Rock Slide, and U-Turn. On face value, this team does seem kind of mid, right? But to be honest, it's got most of the pieces it needs to succeed in the doubles environment, even if it's not necessarily the right Pokemon. He's got access to an Intimidate user and screens for damage mitigation. This would help his Quiver Dance Volcarona more reliably set up to sweep with Heat Wave. And Overcoat Reuniclus is really reliable counterplay to Sporamungus, who is ever present in VGC tournaments. Really, it's just a solid team overall with very clear lines into a lot of teams, nearly the top of B tier. So who is king of the mid bros? Well, that'd be another Unova native in Drayton. Despite being a monotype trainer, Drayton managed to build a pretty solid team with great item choices, and it doesn't hurt that he has access to Gen 9 Power Creep. His team is Yachi Berry Multiscale Dragonite with Extreme Speed, Thunder Punch, Ice Spinner, and Tailwind, Life Orb Flygon with Earthquake, Stone Edge, Fire Punch, and Breaking Swipe, Focus Sash Moldbreaker Haxorus with Earthquake, Breaking Swipe, Iron Head, and Dragon Dance, Weakness Policy Unburdened Sceptile with Dragon Shear, Leaf Storm, X Scissor, and Acrobatics, Expert Belt Swift Swim Kingdra with Rain Dance, Ice Beam, Hydro Pump, and Hurricane, and Assault Vest Stamina Archaludon with Electro Shot, Dragon Pulse, Flash Cannon, and Snarl. Okay, maybe I lied about the monotype thing, but in fairness, Sceptile used to be able to become a dragon type, so this is close enough. This team looks like someone who knows how to make a VGC team, but refuses to run anything but their favorites and wants to build a mono dragon type team. I mean, it's got double strategies built into it. Dragon Cheer Sceptile outspeeds all of the other partners and can grant them a 50% critical hit chance since they're dragon types. Tailwind Dragonite provides speed control for the team, and Rain Dance Kingdra not only enables its own Swift Swim strat, but it lets Archaludon spam Electro Shot and bypass its charging turn, meaning it can snowball very easily. Also, look at that Archaludon set, that's just straight up what VGC players tend to run, only that you'd typically see Body Press on it to take advantage of the stamina boost and absolutely crush Incineroars. But this is a really solid attempt, and definitely a B-plus team. And with that, we've made it into the big leagues. Once again, these teams aren't really recommended if you want to win a VGC tournament, but they're pretty close to being good. At the bottom of A tier, we have Cynthia. Now, some Sinnoh fans in the comments are going to be kind of mad about that placement, but truth be told, her team is good, but not great, even with all the items available to it in the Pokemon World Tournament. Her team consists of Focus Sash, Sandvale, Garchomp with Outrage, Earthquake, Swords Dance, and Stone Edge, Rocky Helmet, Pressure, Spiritomb with Sucker Punch, our first Protect in the video, first Protect user right here, 
Will-O-Wisp and Pain Split, White Herb Poison Point Roserade with Leaf Storm, Sludge Bomb, Shadow Ball, and Sleep Powder, Leftover Serene Grace Togekiss with Air Slash, Aura Sphere, Shadow Ball, and Grass Knot, Life Orb Inner Focus Lucario with Close Combat, Dark Pulse, Stone Edge, and Extreme Speed, and Choice Scarf Snow Cloak Glaceon with Ice Beam, Shadow Ball, Signal Beam, and Water Pulse. Wow, this is a pretty scary team, even by today's standards. That Lucario is actually really solid in Cinnaroar counterplay, as it's immune to Intimidate and can't be flinched by Incineroar's Fake Out while being able to one-shot it back with close combat. Sash Garchomp can set up and spam Earthquake next to a ground immune Togekiss, and that very Togekiss can spam Air Slash with a 60% chance to flinch due to its ability Serene Grace. Spiritomb also provides some damage mitigation in the form of Will-O-Wisp and can help with board positioning as it's capable of clicking Protect. Really just a decent little team with some heavy hitters and lines into a lot of stuff that you can expect in a doubles match but it's definitely suboptimal with a lack of Protect on Garchomp, Lucario, and Roserade. Togekiss should also definitely have Follow Me to support the team with Redirection, and that Garchomp probably wants to be running its best ability in Rough Skin, considering this team doesn't have Sand on it. That Sand Veil does literally nothing for it. And the elephant in the room here, but there's no speed control at all, making it difficult to pilot into other Hyper Offense teams. But A tier nonetheless. Hey guys, we're pretty deep into the video and a lot of people tend to comment before making it this far. I think it'd be a really funny joke if in the comments you left a comment acting like you're really surprised how made it all the way to the top of the list. Like, how is obviously not at the top of the list, he's all the way down in D tier, but I kind of want to mess with everyone who didn't make it this far, okay? You know, just comment like, wow, I can't believe how I actually won this. You know, that decision I really did wonders for him. I don't know, something stupid like that. Okay, back to the video. Now, who beats out Cynthia in the rankings? Surprisingly, Mustard. Yeah, this dude from the Isle of Armor DLC in Pokemon Sword and Shield actually kind of has some sauce. And by that I mean he's got an Urshifu. Look, Urshifu is head and shoulders above most other Pokemon on any of these champions teams due to its busted ability and signature move. Unseen Fist Surging Strikes ignores all defensive counterplay to it other than like one or two things like Burn and Sun, but it can single-handedly carry a mid-tier team. Which is definitely what it's doing here, as Mustard's team consists of Inner Focus Mian Shao with Fake Out, Close Combat, Blaze Kick, and U-Turn, Intimidate Luxray with Wild Charge, Crunch, Psychic Fangs, and Play Rough, Unnerf Corviknight, weird that he's not running Mirror Armor, Unnerf Corviknight with Iron Head, Brave Bird, Light Screen, and Body Press, Kenai Lycanroc with Stone Edge, Accelerock, Play Rough, and Stealth Rocks, Soundproof Kamoa with Clinging Scales, Flash Cannon, Aura Sphere, and Clinger Soul, and Unseen Fist, G-Max Urshifu with Surging Strikes, Close Combat, Iron Head, and Poison Jab. Does this team lack items? Yes, but you know what it doesn't lack? Fake Out plus Surging Strikes on lead. GG, shake my hand. That along with an okay Intimidate user and some setup options in Clanger Soul Kamoa makes this team one of the easier ones to pilot. Yes, items would really put this team up there in power, and they are essential for most teams, but I'm not joking, Fake Out plus Urshifu is enough to put this in the middle of A tier. Tell me how Blue from Generation 1 had his team age so well. Look at this. Choice Band Pressure Aerodactyl with Stone Edge, Earthquake, Ice Fang, and Fire Blast, Life Orb Chlorophyll Executor with Leaf Storm, Wood Hammer, Zen Headbutt, and Leech Seed, King's Rock Intimidate Gyarados with Waterfall, Earthquake, Ice Fang, and Outrage, Focus Sash, Inner Focus, Alakazam with Psychic, Focus Blast, Shadow Ball, and Reflect, x Belt, Intimidate, Arcanine with Flare Blitz, Close Combat, Wild Charge, and Extreme Speed, and White Herb, No Guard, Machamp with Superpower, Stone Edge, Fire Punch, and Bullet Punch. Bro has a strong Fire Water Grass Core, two Intimidate users, pretty smart item choices, and decent damage output. Yes, it's lacking speed control and protect, but this might be one of the easier teams to position a Pokemon to take a KO. Blue could pretty easily lead off Gyarados and Arcanine, get two Intimidates off, and threaten major damage with Flare Blitz off of that Arcanine. Choice Band Stone Edge Aerodactyl also outspeeds most Pokemon nowadays with its 130 base speed stat, and can threaten one-shots with its admittedly shaky accuracy move. Even lead Alakazam with Reflect is great next to these Intimidate Mons. But once again, the team is lacking Protect, Speed Control, and frankly, status moves in general. Really great team, really huge weaknesses. A tier it goes. At the top of A tier is our friend Red. We reached him for comments about not making S tier. Now, Red, despite being a Gen 1 trainer, had his team age pretty well, much like Blue, even though he's running a Pikachu. So let's examine this. Well, once again, we'll be using the Pokemon World Tournament team. Red has a Light Ball Static Pikachu with Volt Tackle, Iron Tail, Brick Break, and Fake Out, White Herb Overgrow Venusaur with Leaf Storm, Sludge Bomb, Earthquake, and Sleep Powder, Focus Sash Blaze Charizard with Fire Blast, Focus Blast, Air Slash, and Dragon Pulse, 
Choice Scarf Torrent Blastoise with Water Spout, Hydro Pump, Blizzard, and Focus Blast, Quick Claw Thick Fat Snorlax with Body Slam, Earthquake, Crunch, and Seed Bomb, and Citrus Berry Shell Armor Lapras with Ice Beam, Hydro Pump, Ice Shard, and Thunderbolt. Once again, elephant in the room, nothing has Protect. That being said, Red has some of the scariest lead options of any trainer on this list, and funnily enough, they're mostly enabled by that Pikachu. Fake Out off of a base 90 speed Pokemon comboed with Scarf Water Spout, a 150 base power move at full HP, can two-shot most leads. Fake Out plus Sleep Powder Venusaur also lets Red have counterplayed against strategies like Trick Room or other more aggressive teams that rely on a single Pokemon to deal damage since he can just put those Pokemon to sleep. Speaking of damage, that Light Ball doubles Pikachu's attack stat, meaning its Volt Tackle is a nuke capable of one-shotting Frail or Electric Weak Pokemon. While his team would definitely be better with optimized sets like Chlorophyll Venusaur, Tailwind Charizard, or Belly Drum Snorlax, it's still a solid Fire Water Grass Core team with really scary leads. Definitely the best in A tier. Finally, we enter S tier. The best of the best. Of the best, because you know they're all champions. But at the bottom of S tier, second place, technically, you know, we only have two people up here, we have Gita. Gita was a bit of a meme upon the release of Generation 9 because many players thought she was a pretty easy match. I mean, she also didn't know how to use that King Gambit right or the Glamora, but there are a bunch of really weird Pokemon on her team that were kind of weak, like Avalug and Go-Goat. But with the Indigo Disc DLC, she got her team buffed in her rematch at the Blueberry Academy. Her team makes it this high up on the list, despite it having no items. Something really weird considering basically every other Blueberry Academy trainer has them. Guess she's just built different. Her team is Toxic Debris Glamora with Power Gem, Sludge Wave, Earth Power, and Light Screen, Opportunist Despothra with Lumina Crash, Dazzling Gleam, Shadow Ball, and Protect, Bulletproof Chestnut with Spiky Shield, Leech Seed, Drain Punch, and Bulk Up, Own Tempo Avalug with Avalanche, Heavy Slam, Earthquake, and Body Press, Clear Body Dragapult with Dragon Darts, Sucker Punch, Thunderbolt, and Shadow Ball, and Supreme Overlord King Gambit with Iron Head, Kowtow Cleave, Terra Flying, Terra Blast, and Stone Edge. It should really have Sucker Punch, but we'll, we'll ignore that for now. Now, this is Gen 9 Power Creep. Right here, this is Gen 9 Power Creep. Not only does she have a dedicated lead in Toxic Debris Glamora, which will set Toxic Spikes if the opponent hits it with a physical move, but she has two Protect options and an Endgame Sweeper in King Gambit. That King Gambit, by the way, has a really good defensive Terra, allowing for it to resist the fighting moves that would normally one-shot it and KO those fighting types back with a super effective Terra Flying Terra Blast. Set up Leech Seed Chestnut with Recovery and Drain Punch is also really annoying considering Bulletproof makes it immune to Sludge Bomb, the most common poison move. And the rest of the team, despite not having great synergy, is just a bunch of solid Pokemon that carry their weight and cover for each other's type weaknesses. Gita definitely redeemed herself with this rematch team. Items would make her a little bit stronger, but it wouldn't bump her past second place. So here we are. Who is the strongest Pokemon champion competitively? Of course it has to be Kieran. Kieran is the only trainer on this list who is a direct commentary on the competitive scene. Game Freak looked at common strategies utilized in VGC and made a trainer who uses these strategies against the player. And while he's definitely the strongest one on this list, there's some very minor issues with this team that frankly any entry level VGC player would make if they were trying to explicitly use the best Pokemon on the team, but weren't super experienced. Kirin uses an Expert Belt Multi-Skill Dragonite with Breaking Swipe, Hurricane, Extreme Speed, and Thunder, a Wakanberry Drizzle Politoed with Ice Beam, Helping Hand, Weather Ball, and Psychic, Life Orb Adaptability Porygon Z with Hyper Beam, Shadow Ball, Thunderbolt, and Ice Beam. That's probably the scariest Pokemon on the team. I'm going to throw that out there. Hyper Beam one-shots a lot of things with adaptability, like look up adaptability Porygon Z gameplay in Generation 8. It was ridiculous. He's got a Focus Sash Prankster Grim Snarl with Reflect, Light Screen, Spirit Break, and Sucker Punch. Citrus Berry, Intimidate, Incinero with Darkest Lariat, Flare Blitz, Fake Out, and Brick Break. Oh my god, someone finally has an Incinero with the correct moveset. And Assault Vest, Super Sweet, Syrup, Hydra Apple with Fickle Beam, Terra Fighting, Terra Blast, Earth Power, and Gyro Ball. Now, I'm gonna be real here. If someone sent me this team and asked me what I thought about it, my honest reply would be, Hey man, you've got the spirit. And that's because, besides the Hydra Apple, Kirin uses a pretty well-constructed team with, albeit, some suboptimal choices. That Grimmsnarl should definitely be running Light Clay to extend screens longer, or maybe a Covert Cloak to guarantee it gets the screens off. Incineroar is so close to being completely correct, but Brick Break is pretty useless and should definitely be replaced with a pivoting move like U-Turn or preferably Parting Shot. That way it can cycle its Intimidates easier. Hydra Apple should probably be Terra Poison, as that's just a better defensive option for it, and he can drop Gyro Ball for Draco Meteor. And typically speaking, Physical Interfocus Dragonite is going to be best for VGC, 
and once again, there's no protects anywhere. But despite these flaws, his team is head and shoulders above any other team on this list in terms of its actual tournament viability. And I really appreciate that Game Freak made a champion that reflects the actual environment casual players can expect if they want to try out the competitive scene. Kieran is undoubtedly the strongest champion competitively. But that's just my rankings based on how well a champion would do in a VGC tournament. Now obviously, this would vary with time as the metagame of VGC shifts day to day and year to year, but the general vibes of a good team are pretty easy to identify regardless of that. What do you think about my rankings? Do you agree? Do you disagree? Let me know in the comments section below. And while you're there, be sure to suggest a topic for the future. If you enjoyed, be sure to leave a like and subscribe. It'd mean the world to me. If you want to support me even further, you can check out my Patreon page or become a YouTube channel member by clicking the join button below the video. This gets you sneak peeks at future videos and even some bonus content. You also see your name at the end of my videos like all these lovely people. Special thanks to my most boosted supporters, Adoc V, Avatar67, Halo, Invisibleish, Jordan Harridge, Pika Power, and Rager Lance for their generous pledges. Another way to support is to check out all the videos in the playlist on screen right now. I know you'll find something in there that you'll enjoy. I also have a second channel where I talk about the current VGC metagame trends, and a Twitch channel where I stream, both of which will be in the description below. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you all in the next video. Bye!